Okay, you guys are live. Ooh, hold on. Let me make sure that. Music. And GTM. You gotta watch what you're doing when you're in these streets, you hear me? You gotta stay dangerous. Finesse and a blessing. I know real, I know fake, I know niggas when they try for trade. Take your skin pill and show me snake. If that's your man, why you bake him a cake? In my head, used to give him a plate. City they a snake, you out. Or they a take you out. I was gonna break you out. They say the good die young. Can somebody help me out? Cause I wanna make it out the game before a fuck nigga snake me out. I know who really who fake. I know who tried for trade. See your sand start to peel and prove a nigga you a snake. How the fuck you gon' say you my man? You let me starve when I needed to eat. I took the charge, you won't do it for me. They say you love what they come with a feet. Nigga, not loyal and bitch, not loyal. Lesson learned when you stuck in these streets. Out of sight when you down on your knees. They see you up, then they don't wanna leave. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Roxanne Johnson. Son's name is Jamal Bird. And, and my name is, I'm sorry, go ahead, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Good me, okay. And my name is Latoya Benton, the mother of Xavier D. Hill, killed by Virginia State Police on January the 9th, 2021. Roxanne did not finished my introduction for her son, so go back to you real fast, Roxanne. Yeah, my, my son's name is Jamal Bird. He was killed by a Metro, DC Metropolitan Police on October 1st, 2019. We're, uh, life after the impact. We're here to tell the stories, to give our, um, our impacted families a voice, to talk about action, action that we can, um, that we can support one another in the aftermath of what happens once our, our, our loved ones' lives are stole, stolen by police as a, as a result of police violence. This evening, we have uh, Melody Cooper here with us. And what you heard before we started was her son's Kwamina Akron, his, uh, his musical stylings. He was a, uh, a, a, a rap artist in hip hop and, 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 and actually working on recording his music. But I'll let his mother talk more about him. Melody, we're gonna turn it over to you. Good evening. Again, my name is Melody Cooper. I'm the mother of now deceased Kwamina Akron. Before I get into telling you what Kwame and I meant to me, I would like to start by sharing what um, life is for me after being impacted. For, for me, it's what I named a silent storm. It's impacted me in a mental yet physical and emotional distress. Enlightenment, enlightenment of Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday, in which he was murdered April 4th, 1968, who was a great civil rights leader and attempts to end this racial injustice. It has been 54 years since Dr. King's assassination, yet 739 days since the murder modern day lynching, I'll say, of my son Kwamna Akron. It's sad to say that racial injustice is still alive and moving in the spirit of uniform officers and which I label to be snakes. Even until this day, but, it, but as it stands from that day on, unfortunately, it's become a driving force towards my future that one day of my past. I will pursue 
these enemies, or shall I say my enemies, and God will keep his covenant with me. Sergeant Willie DeGatto, James Doyle officer, unlawful officer, Kyle Kuhn, and Captain Labar DeCano. is the part of my past that has fully equipped me for the future. I won't allow that part of my past to defeat me. You guys did not play in the projects. You guys played at the fair. It's time to reveal the truth and release the facts. Sorry. As Kwame and I would say, cut the grass and release and reveal the snakes. The grand jury said the fact say they were not guilty of committing a crime, but the truth said they are guilty and the truth shall not allow them to be free. Right. I have dedicated my life to this, this will that we as people of color can live a life that is meaningful and free from police violence. We too were meant to live free. Yeah, I'll get back with y'all. Y'all took the wrong son. My son, Kwamina Akron, was born a prince. When he was born, they held an outery for him, and which that time I was ignorant to the, what shall I call it? <sighs> I'm sorry, I'm a little bit emotional, of course listening to my son's voice, hearing the song that he, he sang two weeks before they murdered him. This real fast, I'm just talking about that too as well, how it makes you emotional when you hear about talk, when you hear his voice after the fact. So that alone itself is an impact that you are having on a daily basis, right? Because after it happens, you're mentally impacted by that on a daily basis, right? Exactly. How do you but, deal with that? How do you deal with that on a daily basis? I have to pray my way through that on a daily basis. Um, I communicate with my son spiritually because um, I think my son had the spirit of discernment. And as I was stating, the song that he, that you guys just heard, he wrote two weeks prior to being murdered. How you can't trust males or females because the female that he was with actually collaborated with the officers and some other um, young male species. I can't call him a young man because men don't conduct themselves in such a pathetic way to be uh, trained by Caucasians um, that lured my son out the house to be assassinated that day. Um, as it stands since then, they've given me medication uh, for depression, which I'm not really taking because it just will have you in uh, a state of a coma, comatose state of mind. I rather feel my emotions than to be numb. Um, is, it's a devastating feeling. It's a feeling that will never go away. My life has changed uh, tremendously in, in, uh, through this devastation of them executing my child. Like I stated, it was nothing short of a modern day men lynching to have uh, shot him in the back several times after having the young man lure him out of the house to go to the store in which I was informed by um, someone three nights ago when they called me, which was a witness, which was the mystery witness. Um, I said that the, the young lady's mother said that Kwame and I was dead within five minutes of leaving the house. That gentleman said, no, it had to be three minutes. They told a lie and said that my son was across 355 if anyone's familiar with um. Gaithersburg, or shall I say Montgomery County, uh, 
Frederick Avenue, which is a six, six lane traffic. No, it has to be eight lane traffic. It's four on each side. And this occurred on a Friday during rush hour. And I knew it was a lie immediately because the officer said that he was standing in front of the police station waving a gun, but he what didn't cause a threat. Okay, if you, you're an officer of the law and you're telling me a lie, but did you not realize your lie didn't even make sense? Mm -hmm. Because if he's standing in front of the police officer with a, um, the police station with a gun, then that's causing a threat. First lie. Second lie was my son ran across 355 and three officers pursued him. Now you're telling me on a Friday at 5.50 PM on a rush hour, and no one got hit by a car? In Maryland, right. right. Or 355, if you're familiar with Montgomery County. That's not possible either. So they lured my son to come outside so that they could do what they did, execute my child in a modern day lynching form because there was a, a the gentleman that I spoke with said that your son walked to the top of the complex and was approached by three hooded men. At that time, he said, my son turned around, start walking fast, then he started running. And I'm sure they should know about fight or flight. If three hooded men approach you and don't announce themselves, and I asked the gentleman, did, did you hear any words exchanged? He said, there were none. They didn't announce themselves as being officers. They didn't ask him to stop. They didn't do anything but chase him from the beginning of the complex. And they said, not only this gentleman, your son ran faster than anyone I've ever saw other than on television. And when your son bent the corner is when a gentleman, as your son was approaching that last building to turn the corner, not a gentleman, an individual, a male got out of the car and he waited till the other three got to the back of the building with him. That's when even the news stated, it sounds like a hell of gunshots. It sounds like machine gun going off. So my thing is, the individual that was sitting in the car from the witness statement says that car had been sitting there five hours. They thought that the person was visiting someone in, as a resident, one of the residents. But when your son bent the, ran towards them, that's when they got out of that vehicle. And when they all meted and met in the back of the building, that's when you held, heard the hell of gunshots in which they struck my son in his back. They targeted underneath his left shoulder blade. So of course they went through the, his back, through his heart and out of his chest. They said, my son was dead before he hit the ground because he went face down. And when I seen his, him, I could tell that he went face down because of his face. And how old was Pamela when this happened? He was just 24. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, um, excuse me, in the process of them committing that crime, they committed several more because my son died face down on concrete. The news said that the first officer attempted CPR, which was not true. The first uniform officer that approached the scene attempted CPR and stated, why didn't y'all wait for a uniform officer? And why did y'all shoot him that many times? But the officer that did approach him, one of the four street crime units, um, they kicked his body over and continued to shoot him in the private area. Mm. After that, they, can, they put up um, sheets and different cloths and things to hide what they were doing with him from the public. Um, put sheets up to the bridge and things like that. So the helicopter, no one could see what they did. But by the time they allowed the news, which was a helicopter, mm -hmm. to see Kwamina's body was under a sheet and he was on his back, um, at least over 100 feet away from where he initially died from. So that's tampering with evidence. 
um, desecrating the corpse when they decided to continue to shoot him in the private area. They power washed while he laid there. Um, one of the witnesses said they brung some type of machine out that they never seen and they were forcing people to go in them, their houses, close the blinds, close the windows, don't look out the window, don't look out the blind. They terrorized the um, residents to the point there was a witness two days later, he disappeared. Hmm. Um, Melody, Melody, mm -hmm. um, I want to show some pictures of your son um, so that people will know put, put in who we talking about. This is your beautiful son. This is pictures of him. Um, what became of the police officers or detectives and or detectives that were involved in this state-sponsored killing? Oh, they had a paid vacation. Were they, were they indicted at all? Was there a grand jury? No, they, 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 they weren't indicted. They had a paid vacation and there was a grand jury held in which the, the prosecutor stated to me that he, himself had a list of charges ready to proceed and indict, which was a Caucasian man. And I met with him at the uh, Howard County uh, Courthouse in Ellicott City. And he looked very remorseful. And he stated, he said, I had a list of uh, charges ready to proceed with an indictment, but I wasn't allowed to do so because of the state's attorney wouldn't allow him to, to do that, which was Richard Gibson. And that's why we did a rally December 1st in front of the uh, Ellicott City uh, Tower County Courthouse because of the outcome of the, the grand jury. So they decided not to um, pursue charges. Right. They stated that they weren't guilty of committing a crime. Uh, because they withheld evidence and then also during the testimony of some of the unlawful officers, the prosecutor was asked to stand in the hallway. So he wasn't even allowed to, to be involved in listening to their uh, contradictive statements of what occurred when there was so many different stories from their mouths mm -hmm. as to what happened that evening. Mm -hmm. So, so because they didn't prosecute, what, what, what uh, actions are you working on now? What, what can we support you with uh, so far as um, activities or actions that you're pursuing um, to get? Well, as it stands, I am pursuing them with the uh, civil suit and um, I also, um, would like to respond to, well, I have to respond to the Department of Justice. They did uh, email me and state that if I could give them substantial evidence that a crime was committed, um, they would reopen the case. And um, since the grand jury hearing, I had not uh, done so, I've been trying to speak with this um, anonymous witness that finally called me and we spoke about what was seen and things to that effect that I will reach out to them also and respond to their um, request for me to give them, show them facts and proof so they would go ahead and reopen the case. But if possible, um, I would like for, <clears throat> the organizations and to have support with uh, email and uh, Ms. Chris, Kristen Clark at the Department of Justice and, excuse me for a moment. There was a, a, a um, uh, I don't have it. Um, I'm not sure about physical letters because I don't know if they will even take their time to read the physical letters. And I did not have a phone number for Ms. Christian Clark, I've been trying to obtain that also, uh, requesting Kwame Knife case to be reopened as a crime. 
being committed. So you want the community's help with, I guess you would say, uh, sending letters to the DOJ in regards to Palmanada's case to have it reopened. Correct. And Marks, I'll send over that. Well, I have a number to send over. We can display it on the screen too. Okay. As you sent up earlier. Did you get it? Okay. And we'll also post it on the Life After Impact website. So you can go on there, um, you know, take five minutes to put together an email and send it to Kristen Clark, um, Department of Justice in Washington, D.C. So, oh, so you did get that information that I sent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we'll That's post it on a... Um, can, can you, uh, for those... Because you know this has not stopped happening. Um, this happened to your son in in what year? What day? It happened to my son January eighth of twenty twenty one, two oh. days after the insurrection. Yeah. And of course, you know that took precedence over the media, and that's why Kwame's murder had not received that much uh, publicity or media coverage. Whereas though. What is her name? Um, Miss Osborne, that was a television host, was fired and got global coverage for uh, racial comments or supporting someone that made racial comments. But yet, and still, these unlawful officers had not been exposed to the media for committing racial crimes. When they murdered my son, that was a racial crime. They call it policing. Mm -hmm. I call it a racial crime because that's exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. are, are these police officers still active duty? Oh, yes. Once the grand jury County? hearing, they were back at work maybe months later. Okay. And they may be under investigation um, by internal affairs because when they passed Anton's law, I did get um, documentations October 1st that confirmed my perception of these uh, crooked cops because my perception was they were trying to get my son or force him to do something unlawful he didn't want to do because two days prior to that, he said the police were trying to kill him. Mm. And then the day before, he said this black um, unmarked SUV was following him. So... When speaking with the investigative reporter, she described that same SUV to me. Mm. He was targeted. Go ahead. He was targeted, you think? I know, for sure, by um, those four officers because it was revealed, and you can look it up, that these officers were already um, had... Uh, disciplinary actions against them for stealing weapons, drugs, money, covering crimes, and harassing black people. There were five of them in total, but there, there was one that used to um, make reports of their uh, criminal activities and the captain of the precinct started making false reports of that one individual to cover up what the other four were doing. So he resigned from the police for it, but he still works with the government. And um, that entity of uh, Gaithersburg police, they are not even a part of the fraternal order of police. So therefore they tried to make some of their own laws. But as of Kwame and I's murder, and I went to the House of Assembly um, February 24th of 2021, because they did not have on body camera. I requested that um, plainclothes officers be mandatory for them to wear body camera as well. Mm -hmm. And then last year, I went to the department of, I'm sorry. <sighs> I had several Zoom calls with different delegates out of Montgomery County in reference to Kwamina's law in which they're trying to pass the law that states that plain clothes officers, not uniform officers, mm -hmm. because uniform officers were already required to wear body camera. 
but the plain clothes officers, go ahead. No, no, I'm listening. Oh, the plain clothes officers were not required to uh, wear body camera. And my request for Kwame Nas law was all officers, whenever engaging with the public and you feel as though you need to carry a gun, you need to make sure your camera is rolling. Not, not um, undercover officers, but plainclothes officers, even when they were off duty and they may see someone in the act of committing a crime. So they say, if you feel a need to pull your gun, you make sure your camera's on and you make sure your badge is ex exposed so that someone would know who you are and also to identify yourself because these are all the things that did not happen with Kwame Nye Ogren. Hmm. So what happened with the law that they presented? Basically last year when I went to the House of Assembly twice, they did discuss the law, but hmm. since they were so uptight is what I'll say because the passing of Anton law that had too much police exposure or giving too much exposure to the public of the police, they shushed away from that law. They were still focusing on trying to fight Anton's law. So now here we are again, because they can only um, present it every so many months, like between mm -hmm. February and March, they can introduce it, you know, that way. So we're still working on it. Yeah. You know, it takes a while, especially yeah. when it's a law coming from an incident with the police. I'm probably trying to find it too as well, you know, like with the system, you said you guys had a current civil case going on right now, right? Yeah. How has it been, without talking about that too much, how has that been for your family just as far as um, just fighting that now? Because have you had a chance at all to even grieve your son passing since it's happened? No, I have not had a chance to grieve because of so many things that's, uh, that has followed his uh, murder. And then he had a friend that was murdered six months later, um, Ryan. The roof that was murdered in, at the McDonald's drive through window, yeah. July. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so when you were talking, um, Melody, about Kwamina's law, you were talking about at, at the state, um, Maryland State Assembly, which meets between January and April. Is there a way that we can support on that as well? If we, if we, um, is that law coming? Is it um, on the docket for this for this um, legislative um, period or? No, okay. it's not, not for this year because we don't have the support of the delegates this year as we had last year okay. because of uh, so many deterrents is what I'll call them. Okay, okay. Right people in our office right now, go ahead. Uh -huh. I, I know that you also, um, or on a weekly um, radio show on WPFW. Talk to us a little bit about that and how, it, how that's been helping to get the word out for you. Well, actually it's a monthly, um, okay. it's the last Friday of every month. Um, we did not have it in December because of the holidays. We will not have it in January because of, uh, I think they're changing around with the radio station. Mm -hmm. So we're basically at the point of, um, I'm just waiting to see as to when and where um, Kwame Nye's case will fit into in what segment, like um, it was Jazz and Justice, mm -hmm. WPFW Jazz and Justice. When Kwame Nye was murdered, um, Dr. Marsha Adebayo, she is a journalist as well as um, she's with the radio station. She adopted Kwame Nye's case. And um, they asked me to be on their station every third Friday of the month. And it was something that I looked forward to because Kwame Nye's murder had not gotten much exposure. Mm -hmm. But through WPFW, I was able to go on um, King Downing's radio station in New York. I was able to go on Mr. Carter's 
radio station in Detroit. I was able to go on another radio station in Philadelphia because of the exposure that I was given the opportunity um, from WPFW. It meant a lot to me and it was very helpful because some people say, how can you talk about your son's death? Um, isn't it hard for you? And I will say, no, um, it's not hard for me all the time, sometimes. But the majority of the time, I feel like it's a relief to talk about it because I'm getting exposure. If I don't talk about it, who will? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I know this is very new. This has just happened, you know, two years ago. Um, what what things can you maybe suggest to because it because they have not stopped killing our children. Right. What kinds of things would you suggest to um, someone who just lost their loved one? What what kinds of things would you recommend that they they do? Well, I would recommend that they get into solidarity with mothers like you ladies and I, because that's what helped me. The Coalition of Concerned Mothers is how I met you. And um, the other mothers that lost their um, loved ones, because I believe if I had not um, met you ladies, I don't know where my mental state would be today because there was no one that I could really talk to. They say you should seek speaking with the counselor. Yes, I did that, but they they don't understand where I'm coming from because they haven't been there. And you cannot tell me about something that you have not experienced. That's right. That's not right. nothing you can learn in school. I don't care what type of PhD you may have or what initials behind your name. You can't tell me nothing about losing a child and being a mother. Yeah. Now, someone tried to debate me that was a cousin of someone that they lost. And they said it hurt more than a mother losing that child. It couldn't possibly hurt more because you didn't <laughs> carry your cousin. It's, it's, it's even harder for a mother that lost a child then the father that lost the child, even though that father made that baby, the woman is the one that carried that baby. That attachment was there before their first breath in this world. So my thing would be for them to reach out to the mothers that has lost their children as well. Also seek counseling. Sometimes counseling can be helpful. And sometimes it depends on who the counselor is that you're speaking to as well, because not all of them function in the same aspect and they don't have the same mentality level. And just stay in, in prayer and always think about um, the good things with your child. And see, the good thing with my child is I not only have a picture, I still have his voice. Mm. I have it on my computer. I have it on CDs. I can look at videos of my son performing. I have something that some mothers don't have, but I still have, don't have him physically. I can't kiss him. I can't hug him. I don't feel his sloppy kisses on my face. I have four mm -hmm. sons, but my baby used to make the sloppiest kisses, mm -hmm. but I loved them because they was his. And that's the way he showed me affection. And I have four sons, but our relationships are not the same as my baby child. My baby child, I have one daughter, she's the oldest and four sons, but my youngest son was more like, um, he took more time with me and treated me like I was his baby instead of him being my baby. And, um, some years back, my ex-husband almost murdered me and Kwamna was in the first grade and his teacher calls and she says, I can't get Kwam to stop crying, which Kwamna has always laughed and smiled. He could get in trouble and be smiling. Even in the courtroom, I had to tell a judge one time, um, ma'am, he's not being sarcastic. He's just 
smiling because that's what he does after he stood up there and explained and admitted to, you know, the mistake that was made, he was still smile. But anyway, Kwame and I um, couldn't, wouldn't stop crying. So she says, I'm gonna have his brother bring him home from lunch. And she asked him, she says, I'm gonna ask him again, well, why won't you stop crying? What's wrong? So he finally told her on his, when lunch came, um, he asked her, is my mother gonna die again? Cause he thought I died. So she says, um, no, but I'm gonna let you go home for lunch with your brother. So when my other son brought him home, he was hugging and kissing me, sloppy all over the place. So he said, you know what, mom? I said, what, Quam? When I get older, you're gonna marry me. I said, well, I can't, you can't marry me, Quam. I can't marry you. He says, well, why not? I said, because you need to marry a nice, pretty young girl of one your age. And besides, sons don't marry their mothers. He says, well, that means you won't ever get married again. <laughs> so he didn't never want me to get married again. I think he might've been onto something. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you so much for coming and sharing, Melody, about your wonderful son, Kwamina. Say his name, Kwamina Akron. Say his name, Kwamina Akron. And we will put the information for Department of Justice, Christine Clark. Send her an email, get on the phone, call her up. And yeah. um, any, any, anything else that we can do to help to support you in your fight for justice, because what we believe, what we believe is that if you get justice, I get justice. We That's get it. Justice. That's what solidarity We're is. We're in this together. So we in this together. And they, and you right. They mess with the wrong mothers. That's they right. The wrong mothers. They rest with the wrong mothers. So if you don't mind, I, I would like us to go out listening to some more of your son's a musical stylings. Is that okay? This yeah, real fast. Um, Roxanne, you yeah. guys. Be sure to look up on Facebook, um, all social media platforms, Kwamina Akron. It's spelled K-W-A-M-E-N-A -E as in Apple, Akron, A, I'm sorry, it's O-C-R-A-N. His, his mom's name is Melanie Cooper on Facebook. Be sure to look up on Facebook so you can support her and her fight for justice. Um, also, be sure to tune in next Tuesday at 9 o'clock. We're going to post on the page as well who the guests will be um, as well for next Tuesday as well at 9 o'clock as well. Yeah. Well, thank you for inviting me, guys, and I will keep you posted as to what I will have planned for Kwamina second anniversary, which was last week, January 8th. I did not um, plan a rally because of the weather, but I will be... Um, having something planned very soon. And I hope to have your support and presence at that time. We'll be there. All right, love you. Love you more. Thank you. Bye-bye. I done seen the fake shit from the fall. Nobody could see me behind them balls. They didn't pick up no my prison calls. Got murder in my mind, think about killing y'all. When y'all popping them bottles, they fucking bras. I was stabbing them niggas and breaking jaws. So y'all know what I've been through behind them balls. What a faggot see yo make you squat and call. Mama won't you Life and I told her no, she the only one that was a trap star Handcuffs on my wrist in the cop car Rub myself in the court with my stand tall I turn to a kid like Chucky Dog These niggas try to sneak me, they get a paw He tryna run up and he gon' fall If you cut the grass, the problem solved I know real, I know fake I know niggas when they try for treat Take your skin pill and show me you snake If that's your man, throw you bake him a cake right, Then my hand used to give him a plate See there, snake you out Or they take you out I was gonna break you out They say the good die young Can somebody help me out? Cause I wanna make it out game Before I fuck niggas snake me out I know who real who fake I know who trying for treat Till your skin start to peel And prove a nigga you a snake Are we still alive, Roxanne? Yeah